You won't believe what's living inside this woman's walls. We open with a lady in the kitchen. Now, there's an opportunity for a joke there, but it's 2022. She reaches for a first aid kit while her phone buzzes away. She gives it a look over, but decides not to answer. As she patches up her finger, which she probably cut from running with scissors, the caller leaves a message. Seems to be a heartbroken ex-boyfriend or something. He really misses her and yada yada yada. And we also learn that there was another man in the picture. Scandalous. My advice? Focus on the grind, young man. The woman, who will now call Stephanie, walks over to the living room, but stumbles, spilling her spaghetti everywhere. We've all been there. As she cleans up the rather bland meal, she notices two drops of blood. She grabs some cleaning supplies, but her attempts to fix the small problem only make it worse and more widespread. This says a lot about society. Now without a meal and ever hungry, Stephanie checks her fridge, but it's empty. Two minutes later, she checks again, still empty. Hate when that happens. So she orders some food before marking where to place a painting. She grabs a handy dandy hammer and prepares to bludgeon in a nail, but instead she knocks a small hole into the wall accidentally. Woman moment. Suddenly, there is a knocking on the door. Stephanie's anxiety heightens. She swiftly tiptoes towards the door, then lays her back against the wall. Eyes closed, she slips down, waiting for whoever, or perhaps whatever, is outside to leave. Then, she quickly undoes several locks to sneak a peek outside. Okay, seems like the coast is clear. She opens it again and grabs her food. You see, Stephanie is agoraphobic, meaning she's afraid of outside. Yes, literally. She never leaves her house. Relatable. Later, Stephanie dictates a text for her landlord. She's thankful for the place, but curious about its blueprint since one of the walls seems to be very hollow. Remarkably, her phone perfectly translates her speech to text without any mistakes, which is the hardest part about this to believe. At night, she brushes her teeth while inspecting the inside of her eye, as one typically does. She's having trouble sleeping. The hole in the wall is on her mind. The moment she closes her eyes, the wall suddenly juts forward. Her eyes widen with surprise, but it was just a dream. Stephanie awakens and has a little therapy session. Her therapist believes it's time for her to come out of her shell and visit the office. Stephanie coughs in response. The therapist suggests this would be a great opportunity to get outside and visit the pharmacy. Stephanie smiles wide, agreeing to the challenge, but her eyes betray her true feelings. On the inside, she's a little scaredy cat. After the call, she dresses up and clutches her keys, staring at the door. The anxiety inside her swells up. She just can't do it. Stephanie coughs once more, and this time, there's another cough that comes from the wall. Eh, probably in her imagination. Instead of investigating that further, Stephanie decides to do some guided meditation. What is this woman's hairdo? Anyway, Stephanie is instructed to imagine a happy place and in it, a throne of her own creation. She is to sit on the throne and relax. Then, the doorbell rings. Stephanie ordered cough medicine and some chocolate. I guess this is her idea of relaxation. Later, on her way to bed, Stephanie walks by the hole and there's hair coming out of it. Say that out of context. Before sleeping, she's sure to watch some minute movies. It's not long before she's perfectly relaxed and sound asleep. You're welcome. But then, in the middle of the night, she emerges. The wall is calling to her. She walks over with a hunger in her eyes. As she slowly approaches, something seems to be alive in there. A single beam of light illuminates what appears to be some kind of tasty snack. Stephanie leans forward and opens her mouth. Maybe it's like a hamburger or something. Okay, um, let's just pretend that didn't happen. In the morning, Stephanie is awakened from her nightmare. Actually, it seemed more like kind of a pleasant dream. Anyway, someone is frantically knocking at the door. It's her ex begging to talk. She collapses next to a wall too scared to be heard or seen. The beta male continues pestering her. He just wants to know how long things were going on with the other guy. He smashes his fist against the door. Her eyes widen. He knows she's in there. Her car is outside. After a while, he gives up. Then he walks over to the window and slams it, leaving what appears to be a note. After her ex speeds off, Stephanie carefully inspects the note. You can't ignore me. Are you sure about that? 
Stephanie involves the police and gets a restraining order. The officer recommends she gets a security camera, given that she's living alone. Stephanie proceeds to do so and sets up the camera while her coughing symptoms worsen. Later in the bathroom, she downs some cough syrup and it be hidden different. Meanwhile, disturbing, gurgling, bubbling animal sounds can be heard coming from the wall. It's leaking now, and then, crack, it's about to burst. Stephanie's cough is becoming a real problem. She checks her phone and receives a message from her landlord. Apparently, there was some kind of undisclosed renovation. That wall isn't supposed to be there. Stephanie continues to sip that good good as the message continues. The lady thinks that some might find this addition to the home creepy, but she finds it adventurous. As far as Stephanie, she's in camp creepy, so she shuts the door. Despite this, she somehow finds herself sleeping in the hallway, right underneath the hole. She makes it back to her feet, then stumbles to her room, but steps on something. It's a tooth. Suddenly, without warning, she crams all 10 of her fingies into her mouth to count all her teeth. Could have just used your tongue, but okay, be extra, Stephanie. She backs away into her room, terrified, and shuts the door. The wall makes gut-wrenching sounds that get louder and louder. In search of answers, she checks out her security camera footage. What she finds is baffling. Stephanie herself can be seen walking up to the hole and coughing something up. Whatever it is, it just keeps getting bigger. Upon closer inspection, it seems to be an entire arm. She snakes it through the hole. In the present, she has no recollection of ever doing that. Overwhelmed with fear, Stephanie dashes towards the door, but she can do nothing more than stare at it. Her fear of the outside trumps all. The wall calls back to her, but just then, she gets a burst of courage. Now filled with determination, Stephanie reaches for a sledgehammer and goes to town, busting it down on the world's most flimsy wall. That's a lot of damage. Somebody call the flex tape guy. With a doorway into the unknown opened, Stephanie stumbles in. She finds herself in a fog-filled void. In the distance is something familiar, a throne, just like the one her meditation instructor had her imagine. But something is wrong here. The throne is alive. It calls to her, and soon, she feels its magnetic grasp pulling her in. She tries to find it, but can't resist its gravity. You can low-key tell she's actually just walking towards it while leaning back, but that's okay. As she closes in, she begins to enjoy the feeling. Out of her own volition, she takes a seat. The throne warmly embraces her before placing a crown on this queen. It's a little weird, but I like it. Relief and relaxation take over Stephanie. Just like in her meditation, she feels like she's where she needs to be. Suddenly, the chair latches on, and it seems like it never wants to let go. Stephanie fights desperately to escape its grip. Finally, she breaks free, grabs the hammer, and slams it down. Fade to back, then snap back to reality. M&M moment. It appears Stephanie has defeated her real monster, agoraphobia. She's outside. She looks back at her handiwork and wonders, how am I gonna pay for this? Like I said, cough syrup be hitting different. Moral of the story, touch grass.